Hello, everybody. Welcome to Drum Education Live, episode number 59, with my friend Felipe Fagundes. Yeah, same name, Hello, same country. Thank you for being here. We met here in London many years ago, almost 10 years ago, and now he lives in France. He moved on. I'm, I'm stuck, but he moved on. So <laughs> yeah. let's start with the, uh, as everybody can see, there's a lot of cajones behind you. <laughs> and I met you as a drum kit player. Yeah. How did the cajon came into your life? How did you start right. in the cajon? Okay, let's start. Uh, okay, as you said, my first instrument is the drum kit. And uh, the cajon, uh, I, when I was in Brazil, I, I left Brazil like 14 years ago. But before I had some contact with the cajon, but I never practiced, I never, I was just trying to emulate the drum kit in the cajon in a very simple way. And then when, uh, when I was in London, I, was, I moved to London and then, you know, I started doing small gigs and, you know, guitar and, uh, and, and, and like a singer songwriter. And then a cajon was, was the one to take, you know, to, to do this kind of gigs. And then I bought a cajon and I started practicing and researching more and then it starts, I think, 2000 and 2012 to 2013. And then I started practicing and discovering and learning more about the instrument. And then it's still uh, my, uh, let's say my second instrument, I was doing gigs, doing drum kit gigs and then doing the cajon gigs. And after five years in London, I moved to France, as you said before. When I moved to France, I arrived here, it was new. I mean, I was also uh, teaching drums. When I arrived here, I started teaching drum kit. And then I was invited to play cajon in a band, in a group that travels Europe. And, and then it starts, since I, I start to be busy with that, playing cajon, playing cajon, <laughs> playing cajon, and practicing and learning more and then that's it. it was like that the cajon was very and then you uh, and then you became the cajon master it's not like that <laughs> <laughs> but that's what cajon your master? website is cajonmaster.com cajon master. right Com. of course you can master the cajon there oh okay. this is the... <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Woo! no actually cajon master is the brand it's about the, uh, uh, the name of, uh, we did, I did like a meeting with friends and then this was the name for the brand. Uh, if master is something that uh, I used to say, I, need, I would like to master everything I do, but I try to master a little bit every day. This is, this, this is the main thing. I mean, to be a master uh, uh, on, in the cajon, on, on drums, something, it's not like that. Every day you need to master something, musicality, uh, technique, and it's a lot of stuff. To say I'm a master is something. I'm never gonna say that. But the brand cajonmaster.com is a place that people can learn cajon, have fun, and master a little bit every day of that particular song or technique or something cajon related. Cool. Because of this. Kira. <laughs> Did you, um, when you were getting more and more into the cajon, did you have a teacher you went to or did you just find a way to teach yourself? Yeah, I would love to have a teacher close to me to, to have some tips at the beginning, but I, I, I taught myself and I learned a lot from YouTube, of course. There's a lot of videos, not now that I'm in the world of cajon, not as much as I would like to have because you can see a lot of videos of the cajon but I think this is why I start doing that I start making videos uh, tutorials and lessons because I think uh, it's gonna sound that I'm in love with the cajon but I love the instrument I think 
the possibilities and the translation between drum kit and the cajon, mainly, I think it's amazing. The cajon is an instrument that, of course, it's not just for that. Uh, the, the history just to, to do like, it came from Peru, was like an evolution in Spain with the flamenco. And nowadays it's something popular to play pop music and to play drum kit grooves. It's the approach I do. Some people or the, uh, use the instrument to play traditional music. My approach is to translate the drum kit to the cajon and try to adapt. And um, but I, think I miss your question. You <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you can not. So <laughs> no, no, actually, yeah. But so uh, I know you you have been putting a lot of videos out there on YouTube, uh, kind of tutorials for the cajon. Uh, the number of videos about the cajon is it increasing, or is just you kind of doing it? Uh, you can find lots of new videos of Cajon uh, for uh, Cajon tutorials and Cajon lessons, but I think the most active one, it's me and uh, there is an, uh, another Cajon player from Australia. Uh, it's called Ross McCollum that he's doing that for, for a long time already and he's active as well. But it's not like the drum kit. I think you can see a lot of, you know, drum videos every day, very good quality drum videos. Cajon is what I'm trying to do, you know, to, do, to put quality content, education for people to learn about the instrument. And, uh, but I would love to see more, you know, because sometimes I feel that I'm kind of, the, <laughs> I'm kind of alone and I try to, you know, soon I'm, I'm going, actually I'm going, I invite some other Cajon players to come to my channel to, to do some lessons with me, you know, to uh, to uh, to explain different different things uh, on the cajon because I think the lack of of other people doing cajon education is, I think, it's big now, and I'm doing that, and I'm gonna try to put this instrument as as popular as I can. You know, this is my is my is what I want to do. And 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 I know you have this approach of. Of kind of trying to translate the, the 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 rhythms you do on drums to the cajon, right? Yeah. Is this something that you always wanted to do, or it's something that you just you kind of consciously decided I'm gonna I'm gonna take that path? It was natural for me. Uh, you know, I played drums for almost twenty five years, drum kit, and uh, was the most natural natural way to do that and the kind of music I play uh, pop music or Brazilian music always I think the groove for example I think dr the drum kit first how it's going to sound a drum kit and of course it's not uh, with the cajon technique that is a hand technique is different I try to learn uh, the, the technique from a lot of different uh, cajon players because it's something that is not like uh, like drum kit that you have loads of techniques like for rudiments and molar and all these these motions with your hand with cajon uh, it's still in my opinion it's still new there is a lot of technique but there's a lot of techniques that can be applied you know is and uh, and I think yes the most natural for me was to, to translate the groups but of course I need to bear in mind that the hand technique is very important. So every day I'm trying to adapt and see what works and what doesn't work. And I record myself, I make the video and I say, no, but this is not right. So every day is an experience. You know? to, uh, today I was doing a video, at, I translate like a, a Latin, a song or rhythm to the cajon and trying to make as simple to understand as possible because you know the song. The song is not simple with the drum. Yeah, and with good with, luck with, with that. The hands to it. But I love it. It's a challenge, but I love it. Great, Kira. So many things to talk about, but I so want to say ahead. your 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 YouTube. You've got what eleven thousand 
subscribers yeah. it's yeah. it's really amazing and do you think i mean how has your experience been growing that is that okay. been your intention from the start or has it been something that's just occurred naturally naturally but it's difficult i'm not gonna lie here i'm, I, I'm not with the numbers every day but the the i mean my main goal was to have these uh, followers subscribers mm. students that really follow me and I, I don't want just a click in the subscribe button i want people that follow that want to play home that are interested in the yeah. uh, in the subject you know uh yes eleven thousand followers yeah it's not easy to arrive in numbers and and sometimes the numbers on youtube is something that you need i mean i need to have to for the, you know the for the youtube to put the videos in a in a place that more people are going to watch mm. uh you know how but to be honest i was more was more at the beginning i was sometimes a bit frustrated because i work a lot i do i mean the thing is to grow youtube like uh like i am doing i'm not doing viral videos maybe one one video can be viral one day but i'm doing education e educational videos and uh what i felt is that uh as much relax and i do the work that is true to myself and to the people it grows but of course at the beginning it's not easy i'm doing a video a week since 2000 and may 2019 so it's kind of a bit more than two years i arrived oh, uh, last 100, week 120 was my videos. video yeah i mean i probably skip some because i arrived in my video number 100 okay it's, i mean i mean but it's a lot it's, no Almost doubt. every week, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of elements, but it's just you know, it's all the thing when you start. It's another thing that I became addicted when you start doing the vi I start doing the videos and I start receiving the feedback from people. I said, Okay, I'm gonna do another one, I'm gonna do another one. I didn't plan to do like that. I'm going to do five years every week, no, but I'm doing now because I know that uh, it's helping a lot of people. And I receive, uh, at the beginning, I received a message a week or something like that. Now I'm receiving a lot of messages every day. And, uh, and I'm very happy. I, this, about the, uh, this is my passion, is to deliver information and help people. So teaching for me is the best. And YouTube for me is even better because I love to do, to prepare all this, to make the video that I love doing, doing videos as well, all these lights and stuff. I love to do that <laughs> before because I have, yeah, I, I have some background with uh, photography and everything. But it, it became something that is natural for me. And I can't wait to make a video to receive the feedback and to answer all the questions. This is the main thing of YouTube and now of, of my courses as well that is all connected, let's say. Sure. Great. Well done. I feel like it's 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 really and it, it, it really is an hard. achievement because it's not easy. Yeah. And yeah. how you are on camera is just really infectious and it's passionate and it and the your passion for it shines through. And I think that's really great. Um I wanted to know because I have definitely been in a situation where I've been in a band and they've said, Oh, sorry. We're not going to do the drum kit today. You're going to play the cajon. You've got a cajon, right? I'm like, yes, I do. Her name is Yvonne, <laughs> but I have never had a lesson. So I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm going to just try and play. And I've had it where, you know, I get bruised fingers and it's not, it's not fun. Um, so I would like to know if you have any top tips. Uh, for how to just start playing and not hurting your hand. Yes, of course. Uh, about hurt uh, your fingers, like to have this these problems. I think. What can I say? I had that probably at, at some point when I started. But it's a hand percussion. I'm pretty sure all the conga players they always at the beginning 
they have problems until they they have the KO and then it became something more natural. But the the main thing I, oh, I see people that never play or, or beginners is to play with the hands stiff, you know, and like no relax. And the thing is the cajon, the fingers are is something that we just leave relaxed, very relaxed to have the ghost notes and also to do the finger roll technique that is the uh, let's say the uh the buzz note brr, brr, you know brr, brr. this is one thing but to not get uh to not hurt yourself is the relax and now and of course the the instrument can it's important as well because sometimes if you have a cajon that the sound is the volume is not doesn't sound, you know, you don't have the bass, you don't have the snare tone, prop, you know, the proper sound. You're gonna try to hit hard and you're gonna try to, you're gonna hurt yourself. <laughs> and also in this situation that you have a drum kit uh, gig and you want to, you need to change for a cajon be because of the place, even if you need to play uh, the cajon in a small place, you need at least I think to use uh, always to have a microphone mm. in the back of the cajon, at least one, because then, and that you can hear a bit of the cajon in the system. This is going to help you to not hit the cajon that hard. And also if you hit that hard, then you're going to get hurt the sound at the end, like, like drums, you know, when you, with the sticks, when you start hitting very tense, the sound, the, the ride, for example, when you do, we, we need to be very relaxed uh, to play like a samba pattern or uh, a jazz pattern. So it's the same with the cajon. For the sound to be good, you need to be very relaxed. And I think, but at the beginning, I think it's normal to hurt a little bit, but not <laughs> too much, you know. But after some time, and if you really continue and like yes but if you stop a little bit and then you come back you're probably gonna get hurt again yeah. i it's think it's uh, to say i i play every day here so i i, I is is all you know i have the case but i try not play strong this not to play hard you know if not the sound and 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 the, and the technique as well you know I, think I have a question it's very about, to drums. Yeah, I have a question about the posture because for me the cajon is very uncomfortable because I, I have to play like that. So what teacher tell me what am I doing wrong? It, it's not a uh, I mean because the thing is because of your back the the first thing people in back cajon do is to play the bass on the middle of the cajon. Like the, like the bass drum. No, no, it's not in the middle. No, it's one second. I need to take a cajon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we want, a cajon. That's what we want, show us. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I can... All right. Okay, I'm gonna put here, look. That's a beautiful instrument. This, mm. okay, look. The bass, I'm gonna put like uh, like that. The bass is here, okay? Not here. The bass normally is here. And the snare is here on the top, okay? If you play on the middle, you're gonna bend over. It's it, it's normal. So you you need to to find the position with your uh, with your legs, okay? Some people, I now I play with my legs. You have like, you can put your feet flat on the ground like that, okay? And look, base is here. You don't need to do that. Look. Okay? And it's there. So, and my back is still, you know, it's not like, like that. Even if 
nice food. Can you hear me? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I can hear your voice. It, nice. Yeah, we can hear your voice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you do like that, maybe it's nice to to see the movement of the body, but it doesn't work. You know? <laughs> Or you can do like that. I'm, I swap be, uh, 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 between both positions. It depends the size of the cajon as well. So mm. this as well. It's gonna show you here. Oh. My back. Or like that. Or if you prefer, you can. Do like that with the cajon. Just inclinate a little bit the cajon and tap like that. Okay. Some people do like that. So the possibilities, the possibilities with uh, with the cajon. The, the posture that these three positions, I think you can solve your problem. But if you, if people play on the middle of the instrument, the sound is not good. I have a video on YouTube, three mistakes for beginners. And I talk about that. So we will link, that, we will link to it. Yeah, we're going to link yeah. everything with at, at, the, at the description section. Okay. We're going to put all the links there. Um, okay. I have a little question then when you if you're playing like a cajon, like hybrid kit, so if just like you've got there, so you've got like a cajon, you've got your hi-hats and a cymbal or whatever, would you put a bass drum pedal against a cajon ever? What's your view on, on that? It's a very good question. The video is coming up this, uh, uh, in the week we are talking. <laughs> yeah, it's ready, I finished today the video. <laughs> I finished today one of my cajon kits that I'm now playing some uh, some gigs here in France. Uh, I used before, I use a lot actually. I used uh, when I was in London, I used a lot of hi-hat, cajon, and the and the and the pedal in the cajon. On the uh, kick in the the cajon. Uh, I used to do that. I'm not doing a lot now because I'm trying to just use the hands and when i need i use one brush or rod sticks for to use the uh, to play the cymbals and with my left hand i play the the cajon and other small percussions uh, uh hand percussions uh it's nice it's very nice uh i think if you put a pedal with a cajon it's very nice is but it's gonna is like the drum kit sound. You need to gonna play the snare in the in the upper part of the cajon and the kick, and you will probably put a hi hat or something. It's very nice. Uh, I probably gonna soon do a video about that. But what I do sometimes is because I don't like to put in the same cajon because if I have a gig and I need to play just the cajon, the pedal is gonna be on the middle. So if I need, I I take another cajon. And I put a drum, a drum bass pedal with another with a, a beater very soft, and it works. Uh, it's, it, well, I think it's a good way for drummers to put the cajon and to use as a as a as a bass drum. But uh, I I prefer use and keep the the instrument with the hands, and uh, I prefer is. Is it's harder, of course, because you need to play everything with you. Know, uh, sometimes you play the right and the left hand need to do a lot of stuff. But it's a good work as well. <laughs> it's a good work if you good independence you work. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Do you think going back to your, you know, your concept of I want to bring drum kit rhythms to yeah. Cajon? Do you think it's possible to play pretty much anything you play on the drum kit on the cajon? Everything. A lot of things, but I don't know if everything. Uh, I think when it's most, I think 
groove wise and uh, even feels i think are possible to emulate the drum kit on the cajon probably there is some crazy stuff uh, i mean to play jazz on the cajon like a, a swing pattern for, uh, for example i i use brushes to do that and sometimes i use one brush to do that uh, it works but i think sometimes it depends of the tempo of the of the standard or something like that it doesn't work but uh, it, or, or it's possible for me i think always is is possible to adapt and probably some i don't know metal uh metal drums something very fast <laughs> maybe it can be emulated but the problem is it's going to be far from what it is, and it's too. Per it's, it's, I think it's there's your up. next video: metal <laughs> drumming on the cajon. <laughs> it's still a percussion instrument, you know. And then I think maybe it's possible to go that far, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, to answer your question, I think let's say almost everything is possible, but uh, to adapt, let's say, it's not the to emulate is something that almost everything, but not everything. Which one was the most difficult for you to translate into the Cajon? Uh, I would say the, you know, the song is not easy. No, I know. I the song the songo is not easy because, on the drums. Yeah, but then when when I when when you get the groove, it's, it's amazing. It's great because it, oh, oh, it's possible. Difficult, uh, it's difficult because everything is difficult at the beginning. Then after we we, uh, uh, we internalize, we integrate, and it's ours. You know, yeah. the thing and, is, in the beginning, everything is difficult, and then the later it gets more difficult. <laughs> the thing is, I say to all 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 my my followers and students. It's going to be difficult uh, sometimes, you know, it, it's difficult, but then you're going to practice and have fun with that. And after it's yours, and then you're going to put your own taste on it. I think it's difficult to say what is difficult. Probably everything was difficult for me, but then practice, practice and practice. And then I arrived there. <laughs> but yeah, some uh, these Latin rhythms, apart from uh, samba was something very nice that I started was difficult at the beginning, but now it's very natural uh, for me to create the samba patterns because this is something that you we don't find a lot of samba on cajon. There is some Brazilian uh, 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 percussionists that do that, but it's something that I try to create a groove every week, a new groove. I'm creating a samba pack for my website, and it's. It, is a very difficult pattern, but I know because I'm Brazilian and I play samba on drums for, for, for a long time, it's something a bit more natural for me, I think. I'm not saying that I'm a master of it. <laughs> I still work, you know, but as everything. And uh, yeah, but talking about this difficult stuff, yeah. The Latin rhythms. Okay. The most difficult. Cool. Here? Do you play? Uh, do you play much drum kit these days, or is it mainly a cajon is the focus? Yeah, I mean, I still play drum kit. I have uh, I have a uh, one of the projects I'm in here in France is a bossa nova samba project, and there's different uh, when it's a small uh, a small group, it's just three. Then I use the cajon kit with the symbols and cajon. But when is a is a quintet five piece? I play the drum kit, yes, the full drum kit. And then I don't play the cajon in this concert. I have some concerts lined up now for the summer. I do I do the drum kit, full drum kit. Yeah. And I love it. Uh, I, some, uh, sometimes I miss that. Because of this, two months ago, I did a video. I put the drum kit uh, in the, uh, on the channel. I, I, I did a video, 10 grooves translated to the cajon. So I play the grooves on the, on the drums and adapted on the cajon yeah but i sometimes i oh i miss then i i oh, i set up the drums and i practice i do i 
I never stayed too long without playing drums, actually. But now the, uh, uh, the cajon is something every day, <laughs> something very present. And wh what, in your studio, do you have more drum set students or more cajon students? I used to have uh, drum set students and cajon students, but now I don't have any more because I don't have time. I, I'd love to have, uh, but I don't have time. I'm f full. You know, it's, it's all online, uh, YouTube and, uh, and cajonmaster.com where are all the, all the members and the courses. And there I do some live, for members, I do some live, uh, live streaming lessons. But one to one, I I don't have time. I just don't have, don't have time. But wow. I, I I love it. I love it. Yeah. But but when, when you I had, was but, uh, when you had the time, it was more drums or cajon. Half half, half half. Yeah, I had the the drum kit students and the cajon students. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So can you give us a little rundown of like, I don't know, <laughs> your week like with the YouTube, because yeah. I guess people don't really know what's involved. You know, they think, oh, you know, upload a video. But it'd be really nice to see a little insight into. Because it's routine. actually two things, right? Is, is, is YouTube and Instagram, because, you know, it's kind of one feeds the other, right? And Facebook and TikTok and Twitter <laughs> and... <laughs> I know, I mean, just to, I'm gonna do how my my workflow of the week works. It's difficult to say, for example, this week or now because summer here, I still playing gigs, and I love it. Probably I need to, <laughs> I need to do less of that because of cajonmaster.com. But uh, normally my week is uh, before I used to do a video in four or five days. Now I do everything in one day. The video is, my videos are everything in one day, maybe two, just to be, but Monday, Tuesday, I need to have, Monday and Tuesday, I need to have the video of the week done. And it generates also the posts for Instagram and Facebook or TikTok and Twitter, if need. but I'm, what mainly I, I, I post on, on YouTube once a week and Instagram and Facebook, probably, I don't know, four or five times per week. And I do stories, uh, all this to keep, I mean, it's normal. I don't get so crazy as I was before doing Instagram every day, twice a day. No, I do, I select the, uh, 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 the content I want to, to post and then something from YouTube, some, some short videos from my long videos of YouTube. And uh, after that, uh, on Wednesday and Thursday is planning the, because I'm now, it's difficult to say, but I'm planning the new courses. So I'm at least two days a week planning the, the new courses that go uh, to cajonmaster.com in September, probably. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, weekend, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a father. I, I stay with my, I try to stay with my kid if I don't have a gig. But try not to work in the weekends. But sometimes I have to say that I run to the studio if I have an idea and I do that. And I make something. If I have an idea, I leave the house and come to the studio and do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, Marie, my wife, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently she's very happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Okay. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> being, being a father, uh, have you tried to teach your son to play the cajon? He's already playing uh, our uh, queen and he's playing lots of stuff. He plays the cajon at home. He has a drum kit at home as well. So, how old uh, is he? Now he's four and a half. Now is the. Uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> four and a half. And this is the. Now is the beginning. Um, I'm uh, I'm start getting a bit more serious in the uh, on drums. I mean, not as a crazy, but just to start the first uh, grooves and patterns, and the cajon as well. I, 
what I'm, I'm going to try is to put the two instruments, uh, the two instruments in the same time, teach a bit of drums and maybe translate the, uh, I didn't try yet, but translate the groove so they can make him to, uh, to understand how, how, how I do the things here. But yeah, slowly, you know, slowly, no pressure. Cool. <laughs> four four and a half there's you know it's still a lot of stuff to do it's cool and so uh, yeah no you know, it has to be fun otherwise of you know. course mm -hmm. always this is the thing is the main thing uh i know that we need to uh the education the music education is something that i mean there is a way to do there is another way to do and there is many ways to do actually this is what I think nowadays with with all that is happening. So it's important to not just teach, it's inspire, no? Inspire yeah. is the inspire is the, the main thing. thing. <laughs> inspire and make people happy when are learning something. No? Yeah. When are when they are ma mastering something every day. This is this is the main thing for me. True. Kier? I love that. Um, I guess I wanted to be a bit nosy again, and like Please. you're busy, you're busy doing your your videos and planning. Do you get any time to practice? And if you do, what are you working on? This is the difficult part. But uh, for every tutorial that I'm making here, let's say that half uh, fifty fifty. I have an idea and sometimes I don't know how to do that pattern or, you know, and I practice, I take, when I arrive in the studio in the morning is the time I play. I arrive, let's say nine in the morning in the studio and uh, is the time I practice. I, I have to say that I practice for the videos and I practice for the courses. And when I have a, a gig or a concert that it's very, I mean, I don't know the parts and stuff. I practice. This is the moment. My practice is much more related to I need to do something. You know, I wish I could just come here and practice. But it's not all the time. Sometimes I can, but I need, uh, with this schedule that's very tight, I need to be very uh, objective. And the practice be, is you know, the practice becomes something related to the video and everything. But yeah, you're right. I need to find more time to practice. For sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure. We all do. We all yeah. need to find more yeah. time to practice. That's yeah. the thing, you know. I, ha I, I have to say in the first lockdown here in France, it was something, uh, probably for you as well, it was something very, we, stay at, we really stay at home. I was making my videos from home. And uh, that uh, two months here in lockdown was the time I practiced at least three three days a week. You know, I had I had time and I had the the little room to practice in my house. So I practice I practice a lot and I wrote the courses that are on at, at cajonmaster.com now. Yeah, but yeah, but the every day now is something we try to adapt. You know? Yeah, everybody. <laughs> cool. Kira, awesome. that time of the interview. Ooh, the last um, question. Oh I, dear. Last it's so question. fast, guys. I want to talk more. So talk yeah. more then. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Please. Do you have a do you have a favorite cajon out of your Yeah, there are like fifty five hundred cajons behind you. So yeah. do you have a favorite? I need to I'm going to brag a bit the the brand because I I use minor cajons I I work with them. It's difficult to have a favorite. I have favorites because for each situation I use different. You know, for some pop grooves or for some Latin stuff or samba stuff. Uh, this one is a is one of my favorites now, but it changes. <laughs> this one is a is a is a flamenco cajon. I think just to to be to make the uh, the answer a bit uh, bigger is longer. Sorry, is uh, the three types of cajon: Peruvian, snare cajon, and flamenco cajon. 
the Peruvian, there's not a snare wire or strings in the inside. Okay. The, the snare cajon, there's the, the snare wires, like the snare drum of a drum kit, the same. And the Peruvian is with strings, like uh, guitar strings all along the front plate. You mean the, you mean yeah. the flamenco? The flamenco, so I said Peruvian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the flamenco cajon, so you can see some strings there in the inside. Can you see? If you turn, yeah, now I can turn, turn, turn to your left a little bit. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Cool, yeah. Yeah. These strings pass here and give all the sizzle sound, okay? And my favorites are this type of cajons from Mino that are the artisan cajons that actually are Mino but are handmade by an artisan in Spain called Pepote. He's a famous artisan, make cajons for very famous cajon, uh, flamenco cajon players. And uh, I love these cajons that they are very sensitive. You don't get, is, 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 you don't get hurt with these cajons, you know, it's, it's something that is, you, you can play very soft and the sound is powerful and uh, beautiful instruments, yeah. My favorite, favorite, for now, is this one. This one uh, is uh, is all 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 handmade. As I said, there is is a very this is like uh, you know, th is the same effect you have in the microphone. When you put a microphone, you don't have the you know the sound here, and there's a lot of strings in the inside. Is it's, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful instrument, very sensitive, very nice. You can tune the strings, the tension of the strings. Have you can have more sizzle, like the the snare drum, more sizzle, uh, more uh, you can tighten up or loosen up, okay, and then you can tight you can tune all the front plate as well. To, then it depends the room you are. It depends where you are playing. The same thing like the conga or drum kit, you know. So this is my favorite. It's called uh, it's the Minor Artisan Cantina Line. Is the name. It's okay. Beautiful. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Lovely. I have videos with with all these cajons and reviews and tests in, on my channel. There is the playlist uh, reviews and there's all the sound of all the cajons. Oh, very great. Like that. Great. Excellent. Well. Thank you very much, boss. Very nice. My pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me. It's a pleasure to, to have this chat with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Loved it. Learned a lot. So thank you. Very yes. Much. And now she's going to buy a new cajon and learn properly. Yeah. Yes. I promise no more hurt hands. <laughs> okay. Let me know. Let me know when you buy that. I'll be happy to help. Oh, thank you. I will. Cool. Bye. Keep in touch.